So in this video tutorial, we're going to be working with Revit to construct a two-story home with a basement. So in that, we're going to be working with multiple levels. So in designing our home, we're going to be doing a skinny or an infill home, which is actually quite popular in Edmonton. Now, the reason why infill homes are very popular is because you can actually put two homes on one lot, thus saving uh, property, densifying the city so it's more environmentally friendly, and also saving costs because you have half the property. So let's get started here by actually going into Revit Architecture. And if you recall from uh, past projects, what we can do is click on new and the default template that we're looking for is not going to work. So we're going to actually change this. And what we want is Imperial Architectural Template. Now, the reason for making this selection is because we want to still work in feet and inches, not to mention the fact that this is a very cleaned up template. It doesn't have any extraneous or extra stuff that we simply don't need. So by clicking on this and clicking on OK, we're going to be pretty much ready to go. Now, in the previous project, if you recall, we had only two levels. We had level one, which is our main floor, and then we have level two, which was our roof. So since this is going to be a multiple story home, we actually have to add additional levels. In order to do that, what we're going to be doing is clicking on one of these elevation views. It doesn't matter whether it's east, north, south, or west, but double clicking on it shows us the two default levels. And it also tells us the levels uh, or the height or elevation. So I want to add additional levels. I'm going to go all the way over here and click on levels. Now, by doing so, I'm not too worried about the height, but I do want to click a series of levels here and we'll get into the structural part and explain why we got so many levels in just a bit. And I'm going to add a level six just in case I want to do a optional flat top on my infill home and have a roof uh, top patio. OK, so here's all the levels. I'm going to rename them shortly, and I'm also going to specify the elevation for them. Now, going into my document here for the infill uh, assignment, you'll notice that we have all the levels laid out right over here. So uh, the very first one that we're going to have is a 0, 0 footing, and then we're going to have a negative 11 foot elevation. Let's actually just start with just renaming all the levels first, and then we'll worry about the heights of those levels afterwards. So going back into Revit Architecture, I'm just going to hit Escape twice. I'm going to do a slow double click and just zoom in so you can sort of see what's going on here. Okay, so there it is. Now, so the very first level is zero, zero footing. And I'm going to do that in all capital letters. Hit enter. Now, here's the important part is I always want to say in terms of renaming the corresponding views. And the reason why I'm saying yes is because once I rename it here, it changes right over here in my project browser. So the next one that I want to do is this one. So again, I'm just going to do a slow Double click, and this one is going to be 01 basement. And don't forget to use all capital letters. Hit enter. And of course, I'm going to say yes. Next one is going to be 02 main. Now, the reason why I'm putting numbers in front of all my levels is because if I don't, it's going to alphabetize everything over it in the properties uh, project browser. So in actually putting numbers in, it's going to actually organize everything here in order. And let me keep going. So this level here is going to be 0, 03 second. Next one is going to be roof. And then last but not least is going to be, I guess, the rooftop escape level. So I'm going to call the 05 roof escape top. We have all of our levels. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to specify the elevations and the elevations essentially is what height will these actually be in. So going back into my document right over here, the very first level I have is a negative 11. And it also specifies the different types of uh, walls we're going to be putting in. And I'll explain the whole foundation in just a bit. Okay, so the very first one I'm going to do is come over here again. Zoom in a little bit, make my life a bit easier. And I'm going to go negative 11 apostrophe for 11 feet. Now you'll notice it disappears from my view, but if I zoom out, here it is right over here. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is going to be 10 feet. But instead of uh, positive, I'm going to put negative 10 feet. And you can see that my basement and my footing level are pretty close to each other. Okay, so next, my main. And I'm going to put my main right at zero feet. My second floor, 
is going to be at 10 feet. And then my rooftop is going to be at 20 feet, so you can see a pattern emerging. And then my rooftop escape, I'm going to put it at 29 feet, and I'll explain why in just a second here. Okay, so as it sits right over here, I have my footing, which is basically part of my foundation. What a footing is, is it is a structural component that makes sure that the entire house doesn't sort of lean or dig in um, into the earth, thus creating a, I guess, a crooked house. So if I look at foundations and do a quick search, I'll just show you what that looks like. So you can see a house foundation right over here, and you can see that this is a footing. The footing is not very tall, and this is going to be the basement. Now, what's going to eventually happen is um, a backhoe or a uh, bobcat is going to backfill all of this, but this is my basement, and these are just cutouts for some of the basement windows here. And so this is my footing. This is my basement concrete wall, and both of these comprise together makes my foundation. Eventually, I'm going to have a floor over top of here, and everything's going to then be wood frame construction up above with my main floor and my second floor. Okay, so going back into Autodesk Revit here, you'll notice that my footing to the basement is just that small little piece of concrete that run, is going to run the perimeter of the actual house itself. All right, so um, you'll notice that the difference between the basement negative 10 and the main, main uh, is going to be 10 feet. Now, what's going to happen is these are going to be 9-foot walls with a foot in between the floor, and that foot is going to be a structural component, being what's referred to as joists and flooring. So without getting complicated, there's always going to be a foot between the levels. And so from the main floor into the second, I know there's 10 feet differential, but again, they're going to be 9 foot walls all the way across. When I get to the rooftop escape here, I don't need it to be a 9 foot wall. It's just going to be a simple 8 foot wall. I don't need that extra foot here. Okay, so when we construct a house, we always start with the lowest levels because gravity. And so in doing so, I'm going to go with my footing here. Now, going into my document, I have to know what kind of uh, materials I'm going to be using and I also need to know the height. So the very first thing that our footing is made is a concrete retaining wall, 12 inches. Okay, now if our task also is to create a house that's between 1,600 and 1,700 square feet roughly, then what I can do is I can actually make my footing area and my basement area approximately 800 square feet, my main floor approximately uh, 800 square feet, and of course the second floor roughly the same as well too. And we'll talk about some things you can do and make things a bit different. Um, nonetheless, anyways, um, anytime that you do square footage calculation, you never ever include the basement. It's only the main and the upper or second floor that are actually counted in the calculation of square feet. Okay, so here we go. Um, I have to go into my architectural tab. I'm just going to hit escape just to clear out and adding any levels. And then I'm going to select the wall. Now, if you recall from the Google document, I'm looking for a 12 inch concrete retaining, which is near the bottom. Don't do a foundation 12 inch. Uh, and the reason being is because this is wrong because it's, it's just going to build really weird. This is way easier to work with. Okay, so this one right here, 12 inch concrete retaining. So I'm going to try designing around the center of these markers. And I'm just going to do a rough outline of approximately 20 feet. And I'm going to come across maybe a little bit more than, uh, say, 40, because I'm going to put a little indentation in here eventually. And I'll come across to maybe about 16 feet and put a small little alcove, and that alcove is going to be for the front door eventually. All right, so that looks good, but I got one problem here. If I hit my doghouse, my footing is way, way, way too large, and I didn't specify my height. So I have to go back and redo that. So again, going to footing, making sure I have a basic concrete retaining wall, but I have to specify the height. So my footing is not very tall, and it's going to only go as tall as the basement. So let's try that one more time. So again, I'm going to come across 20, go about 44, and I'm come across about 16 feet here. And so this is roughly 800 square feet inside the footing area. Okay, so once we've done that, let's hit our doghouse. And you'll notice that if I turn this into shaded, this footing here will actually resemble 
the footing right over here. And of course it's concrete. Okay, so let's go to the next level. And the next level is the basement. So the basement walls are gonna sit directly in the middle of the footing. So by double clicking on the basement here, you can see that I can actually trace out the outline. Now, according to this document here, I wanna go with just a generic eight inch wall. Okay, so let's go wall for my wall types. Here's my generic eight inch. And I just wanna con uh, trace the con uh, contour or the perimeter of the existing level or footing. And I wanna do it so it's on the middle. So I'm gonna have to let my object snaps work here so it actually finds a center line. Okay, so I made the same mistake about not specifying my wall height and it's too high. Now I did this on purpose, but because I can show you different ways of actually specifying wall heights. Now, what I should have done is when I started drawing, I should have actually specified the height going up to the main floor. But if you ever make that mistake, it's really easy to fix. I'm gonna click on this wall, go control click, so I can do a multiple click selection. And just miss one right over here. I'll have to zoom in. There we go. All right, so what I can actually do is you'll notice that the top constraint was left at unconnected. So I'm gonna change that and I want the basement uh, walls to go as high as the main and then click on apply. And there it is. You can see that actually is lower. So I won't make the same mistake three times. I'll make sure I specify the height from the main to the second floor next. So all I've done is create my foundation complete with footing as well as basement wall. And both those combined is your foundation. Okay, now when I double click on the main, I got a bit of a problem. I can't see what to do because it's actually not showing me the previous level below it. So in order to do so, I'm just gonna come over in this area and scroll down to where it says underlay. And right now the base range is none. I wanna look one below level of the main, which will be the basement. So if I click on none to basement and then apply, now I can see in gray a level below. So you will have to play with the underlay and turn it on or off as desired. Okay, so now the next I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my main walls and it's just gonna be a generic six inch and I'm gonna change it to core interior and I'll show you what that means. Okay, so let's go wall. Let's go over here to a generic six inch. And again, you can see that this is unconnected. Let's actually specify the height this time and we want to go from main to second, just like that. Okay, so when doing so, if I start drawing my walls in the center, just like I kind of did last time, oh, that kind of extends a little too far, so let me just kind of continue over here, and I'm not going to go all the way. Okay, so the problem with me actually leaving on the default wall center line is that when I hit my doghouse and look at my 3D view, you'll notice that there is a small little lip and I don't want that. In fact, my wall should actually be flush with the basement. We don't wanna have this little lip over here. So I'm just gonna modify and delete this and we're gonna just make one change in the setting. Okay, so let's go back into my main floor and then in selecting wall and a generic six inch up to the second floor. I wanna actually change this now to core, oh, my bad, core face exterior. All right, so clicking on the corner here, now you'll see it's gonna line up with the outside edge perfectly, so I'm not gonna have that lip once I finish tracing this. And sometimes it's helpful to zoom in to see what you're doing. Okay, so that looks good. Let's hit the doghouse. And now you can see from what we've got here is a house with multiple levels. We got our footing, we got our basement, and now we actually have our main floor. So now we have to do actually the second floor. So let's go ahead and double click on second floor. And again, I've got the same problem. I can't see a level below. So let's go ahead and change it in my properties to the underlay and specify one level below second, which of course is main. So there it is. Okay, so looking at the document here, I can see that my second floor is gonna have a generic six inch and we're gonna go wall center line. So everything's gonna be nicely aligned. I'm gonna turn this back to the default. Okay, so let's go wall. Generic six inches, great. And now Revit Architecture is becoming more intuitive. It's actually already selecting the roof for me, which is awesome. Okay, so let's go back over here. We wanna change this from core face exterior to wall center line. And so I can just go over here and just find the center one more time and I can start drawing this out here.
Okay, great. Let's hit our doghouse and see what we've got. Okay, so we've got our basement, our main, and our second floor. Now, when you're designing a house, it's important to know that your footprint for the footing is always going to match the basement. Now, same goes for your main floor. The main floor footprint is always going to match the level below. And the reason being is because if I went ahead and supposedly pulled out my wall like this, and then all of a sudden my main floor extends beyond my foundation wall, this is unsupported and this cannot be built because literally half of your home is going to melt and break apart. So we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and just put that back by going control Z. Now the only difference that we can actually change in the footprint if we wanted to is we could actually change uh, the second floor. The second floor does not have to follow necessarily the contour of the main floor. So for example, if I go to my second floor here, what I could do is I could take this wall and click and drag it. So maybe I have off the master bedroom a bit of a balcony or patio. I'll just bring this back just a little bit more. That should do it. Now, same with this front wall. I can actually extend this outwards. Now, what we're doing here is going to pull this out two feet only. It doesn't have to go out like crazy amounts. And so when I hit my doghouse, you'll notice that I have room right over here for a master bedroom balcony off the back of the house. And what I've done here by bringing this out is I've created a cantilever. And what a cantilever is, is just a way of extending or overhanging something. Now it's important to know that if you do a cantilever, you have to make sure you don't go crazy amounts of this portion hanging over uh, because structurally it's just not going to work. And so that cantilever can't be typically more than two feet from say here to here. Okay, so that concludes the video tutorial on levels. And I would of course go ahead and make sure that I use my measuring tool to look at square footage and make sure that, you know, on the main floor plus the second floor, I'm around 800 square feet. And here's my measuring tool in which I could actually measure that. And when you're doing that, you're always measuring from the inside of the walls because that's where your square footage is actually calculated. So right over here, you can see that I've got 19 feet, eight inches, and I can get the length and the width and cut out this notch and find out what the square footage is approximately. So in the next video, what we're gonna be covering is putting in floors, stairs, and then doing some uh, cutouts for the floors. Otherwise, we're going to have a staircase fail. Um, and then we're going to add some railings and some personal touches. So this concludes part A of the video. Stay tuned for part B.